Thank you for joining us today to check out one of our sermons. And if you're ever in the area, we would love to invite you to come and join us at Thrive Church in person. It's great that we have resources like this that we can watch online, but there's no substitute for the church gathering together in person to praise and worship our God. Also, if you would like to support Thrive Church, we'd invite you to do so by going to thrive.church slash give, and you can make a donation of any amount to support the work that we're doing here. Finally, if you're enjoying these sermons, we would invite you to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and it will keep you informed of new sermons and new things that we're doing here. With that, we hope that you enjoy the service. to see you today. My name is Judah, and I'm the lead pastor here at Thrive, and we are excited to have you as we are continuing this series called Twisted, and we're taking a look at verses from the Bible that maybe have been twisted around, misused or abused, uh, twisted to mean something that they don't mean, or sometimes we're taking a look at things that maybe we thought were in the Bible, but really aren't even in there to begin with, and, and how that relates. If it if it's true or if it's not true. So what we're looking at today is something that many of us have probably heard at some point in our life, and it goes like this. God moves in mysterious ways. You guys heard that before? God moves in mysterious ways. Has anybody here, have you heard somebody say that before? Okay, great. Now, now put your hands down. Anybody here ever think that that was in the Bible? Raise your hand. Okay, so you guys are like, I'm not raising my hand for this one because I know this is a trick question. That's okay. A lot of people thought it was in the Bible, uh, but, but it's not, you know. It's not actually, and there doesn't mean it's, it's wrong, it's bad, but, um, but you know, it, it's not actually in there. And the idea, though, the idea is that you can never fully understand God because he's just a mystery. Like, he's mysterious. He's a mysterious God. You know, I, I love a good mystery, Anybody like mysteries? Anybody? Books, movies? Okay, some of you guys like, like, I love mysteries. You know, I have a problem when I watch movies. And it's that as we're watching a movie, I'm actively commentating on the movie, trying to figure out what's going to happen. You know, I'm always trying to predict what's going to come next, what's going to come next. And it can be rather annoying. My family sometimes gets annoyed, but now eventually a lot of them just jump in and they try to help me predict what's going to happen. But the movies that I particularly enjoy are the ones that I cannot predict the ending. You know, a good mystery. I love something that, that has twists and turns. We love mysteries unless if it's our life. Life, right? Like, we don't like it when it's our life. Like, what, what's, the, what's the mystery? How, how is this situation going to work out? How is this relationship going to work out? You know, am I going to be able to avoid bankruptcy? You know, am I going to keep my job? We don't like mysteries so much when they have to do with, with us. We don't like to live in them. God moves in mysterious ways. God moves in mysterious ways. I'm just curious. Um, this isn't a trick question or anything, not entirely, but, uh, but it, raise your hand if you believe that's true, that God works in mysterious ways, okay? Bunch you. Okay, now, now raise your hand if you think God does not move in mysterious ways. Okay, a couple of you. Not, if you're like, I don't know how God moves, raise your hand, okay? That's like the rest of us, we don't know. You know I, I think there's a, there's a little bit of both in there, right? Sometimes God moves in mysterious ways and sometimes he doesn't. But, but it's not in the Bible. Where that line actually came from is it came from a hymn by a, name, a man named William Cowper. William Cowper wrote a hymn, and it had that line in there, God moves in mysterious ways. Now, William Cowper was an interesting uh, guy. Uh, his, his mother died at a very early age, and that kind of set him on this trajectory of, uh, of depression. And, and he was uh, suicidal. He attempted suicide on three different occasions, uh, was not successful, but it landed him in a mental institution for a long period of time. After coming out of that mental institution, he started kind of getting his life on track with God, where he met a man named John Newton. John Newton was a songwriter of the day uh, who has written the, the great 
great song that many of us are aware of if we've ever been into church. Even if we haven't, it's called Amazing Grace. So, so William Cowper became friends with John Newton and, uh, and they started writing songs together. In fact, they wrote an entire hymnal together um, and, and one of the songs in there was this song that has the line in it, God moves in mysterious ways. You may have also heard that song from the movie Blues Brothers, because I think they use that, as well as something about being on a mission from God. But I'm not saying we should take our theology from, from there. But God moves in mysterious ways. The implication here, it implies that God's ways are beyond human understanding. Like we cannot understand how God moves. We cannot understand the things that God does. So today, as we study this line, as we study scripture, we're going to learn a little bit about how God does work. God works in mysterious ways. A mystery is something that is unknown or difficult to explain. And if you think about it, God is kind of unknown and a little difficult to explain at times. So it does kind of sound like God, like, like there's a little bit of truth in there. In fact, if you look in Romans uh, chapter 11, verse 33... It says, oh, how great are God's riches and wisdom and knowledge. How impossible it is for us to understand his decisions and his ways. How impossible it is. We, it's not possible for us to fully understand. In your notes, there is no way we can know everything about God. You know, we can spend our entire lives learning about God, studying scripture, but there is no way that we will learn everything about God. It's kind of like, uh, like ants. I don't know. I, I just, I think about ants sometimes. And, you know, I, I have some ants in our, in our yard, as probably most of you have. And every time I see ants and I start looking at them, I, you know, I, I'm, I just start wondering, like, can they see me? You know, it's like, and if they can't see me, what do they think? Like, what, what, what do they think about me? Like, do, do, they, do they have any concept at all of, of who I am, right? If anything, I mean, they probably look like, wow, there's a giant over there, you know? And, um, and I just hope he doesn't step on me. Like, that's probably like the majority of thoughts. If they have any thoughts at all about me, likely they have none. But, but if they had a thought, I'd probably be like, I just want to avoid the foot. And why is this guy so huge? And, and, and as I think about ants, I'm like, but they don't realize that like I have a name. They don't realize that I have a job. They don't realize that they're on my property. I bought this property. You know, they don't realize that, that, that I have a family. I have a wife and, and four wonderful children. They, they don't know anything about me. This, these ants, they, they don't know anything. And anything they do know is, is it pales in comparison to the truth about who I am. And, and then I start reflecting that on God. I'm like, I wonder if I, like the, if how the ant is to me, I wonder if that's how I view God, right? Like, like I, I know a little bit about God. I see a little bit but man, I, I just really have no clue. Like there's so much that I don't know about God and, and who he is. You know, there's certain things about God that will always be a mystery. For example, this idea that we hear in church sometimes about the Trinity, the Trinity, which means that, that God is three different persons, but one God. What does that mean? I don't know. People try to explain this by saying, well, it's kind of like water. You know, water is solid and it's a gas and it's a liquid. Three things, all the same one. Yeah, maybe. And some people say, well, that's heresy. I'm like, you don't know either. Like nobody really knows. Like we cannot grasp this. Like we don't understand entirely like, like how this can be. We, we don't understand this idea that God is eternal, that he has no beginning and end. I don't know. I have no clue what that means and, and how that even works. I have no clue. It's a mystery to me. You know, last week we talked about God being an omni-God, that he's omnipresent, meaning that he's everywhere at once, that he's uh, omniscient, meaning that he's all-knowing, and that he's omnipotent, meaning that he's all-powerful. I don't know how that works. I have no clue. It's a mystery to me. But usually this phrase, God works in mysterious ways, isn't about those things. It's not about the things we don't know about God. Usually it's kind of like an amazement about the things that God does, right? It's like the, the things that he does, like, like you're, you're having a, a difficulty in life or, or you, you need some help with something. And, uh, you know, I, several years ago, I was cutting some, some wood and I had these big trees I was cutting down. I was splitting them. And, and I'm like, man, this is just so much work. And I was just so overwhelmed. And, and a friend of mine called me that morning. And he's like, what are you doing today? I'm like, I'm splitting wood. He's like, you need help? I'm like, yes. And he came over and worked the whole day with me. The next day, you know, he had to, to go do some other things. The next day, I had to do more splitting. Another friend comes, what are you doing today? I'm splitting wood. He's like, do you need help? I'm like, yeah. And it was like, God works. It's mysterious. I don't understand it. And that's kind of what this phrase means. 
that God works in mysterious ways. It says in Isaiah 55, verse eight, it says, my thoughts, this is God speaking, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts. Underline that. God's thoughts are nothing like your thoughts. Aren't you kind of glad though? Like honestly, like I'm glad that God's thoughts aren't like my thoughts. You know what my thoughts are like? Like, I don't know. I'm like scatterbrained half the time. We get in a conversation about something and before you know, we're talking about like something entirely different that nobody's qualified to even talk about. It's like we just go from one thing to another, to another, to another. It's like all over the place. I'm glad that God's thoughts are not like my thoughts. He says, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord. And my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Kind of like that ant thing, right? It's like, like just as, as that ant can't comprehend me, I can, I can barely comprehend God. Now we do see God doing some mysterious things in the Bible. It's pretty crazy. These are some unexplainable things. Right, like, like Moses, if you know the story of Moses, he was uh, from the Old Testament and, and he was just out there and he's tending his sheep in the wilderness and he's just walking and then God starts speaking to him through a burning shrubbery, right? It's like he's just walking and then there's a bush over there on fire and you're like, oh, wow, that's interesting. Maybe I'll go put it out. And he goes over to it and the shrub starts talking to him. I mean, this is crazy stuff. This is weird. Uh, you know, later on, uh, Joshua is leading the Israelites. They go to Jericho. God says, here, I'm gonna give you your, your, your military strategy for defeating Jericho. I want you to march around it one time for every day for six days. And then on the seventh day, here's the kicker. I want you to march around it seven times and blow some horns. Like, that's it? Like, where's the strategy? Well, that, that's it. And they go and they do it. And on the seventh day, they march around seven times. They blow the horns and it says, the walls came tumbling down. That's weird stuff. You know, in, in Matthew, Peter uh, needs to pay his temple tax. And, and Jesus is like, you know, I gotta pay my temple tax too. He says, Peter, why don't you go fishing? Go fishing and you'll catch a fish. And in the mouth of the fish will be a coin. And you can take that coin and pay your temple tax and my temple tax. I'm thinking like, Jesus, was that really necessary? Like, like, like you could have just said, you know, here, Peter, here's a coin, or, or hey, look, lift up your foot. There will be one under your shoe. No, he's got to go fishing. It's kind of strange stuff. Or, or Jesus is at a wedding and, and the wine runs out. And so, you know, he does this miracle where he turns water into wine. I'm thinking like, like he could have just made the wine bottles just keep pouring. Like he did that in the Old Testament with the oil in the vase, how it just kept pouring and pouring. Like, like why did you have to bring the water and then turn it into the wine? Or then there was a blind guy and the blind guy couldn't see him. And Jesus could have just spoke and healed the guy, but no, he starts spitting in the dirt until he makes mud. Like how much saliva does it take to make mud? You know, these are the things I think about. Like that would be, I mean, it could have taken five minutes for him to spit enough <laughs> spit. He takes it and he rubs it on the guy's eyes and it's like, go wash it off now. The guy's like, yeah, <laughs> I think so. He goes and washes it off and then the guy can see. You're like, wow, wow, this is crazy stuff. God does work in some mysterious ways. In my own life, I was going through a, a crisis of sorts and I was on tour with a band and I was out in the middle of, I don't know, the Ozarks or something, not sure what I should do. And, and I'm wandering aimlessly around, you know, 11 o'clock at night in some random parking lot. And there's some dude there in a, in a beat up, you know, minivan in the back far dark end of this parking lot. He's like, hey, come over here. I'm like, what, what, what do you want? And, and he just talked to me. He's like, you know, I think, I think you need to, to go home. You need to do some th things. I'm like, I never met you before. Like, why are you telling me these things? But God was working through this guy in mysterious ways. So God can and does work in some interesting ways. And I guess kind of the purpose of this phrase is to, to give us an answer when nothing else is available, right? Like you prayed for one thing and it didn't happen. Well, God works in mysterious ways. God moves in mysterious ways. And while there is some truth in that statement, God also works in ways that are not mysterious at all. And see, the problem is, is that, that, that when, when people feel like God only works in mysterious ways, they kind of feel like they can never really know him. It's like, I don't know what he's gonna do. I, I just don't feel like I know him. Can I, can I even know who this God is? See, ever since the beginning, ever since creation, God has been revealing himself to mankind. In fact, Jesus came to this earth to reveal God to us so that God wouldn't be as much of a mystery. See, God wants you to know more about him. God desires to reveal himself to you. It's 
like playing hide and seek. You know, the only reason why I play hide and seek with my kids is so that they can find me and for a few minutes of quiet, you know, <laughs> while they're looking. But, but, but the reason why you play, I mean, the, we don't hide like so hard. Like, oh, there's places I could hide. You will never find me. Like, that's not really a fun game. You hide in order for them to find you. So, so God, although he seems mysterious, he wants us to find him. How do we find him? We find him through reading scripture, through his word, through prayer, through gathering together to listen to the teaching of scripture. See, in your notes, God isn't trying to hide from you. He's not playing this cosmic game of hide and seek where he's like, well, I'm just mysterious. You'll never, never know anything about me. You'll never know who I really am. Now, yeah, there are some unknown things about God, but there's also some known things about God as well. And honestly, we probably spend too much time focusing on the unknown things, right? The unknown things like, why did God let this thing happen? Why did this thing happen in this world? Why did God let that happen to me? You know, why, how does this work? And can God, can God make a rock that he can't lift? And, and did Adam really have a belly button or not? Like we're asking the questions <laughs> that we will never fully be able to answer. Answer, answer these things. But instead of, of focusing on these things that are, that are the mysteries, we should focus on the revealed things about God, things that we know about God from his word. So here are some of the things that we know about, about how God works. In your notes, God is always true to his promises. God is always true to his promises. There's no mystery here. It's not mysterious. If he says it, he will do it. There's no mystery. He's always true to his promises. It says in 2 Peter uh, 1 verse 3, it says, by his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. So God has, has equipped us and supplied us with everything we need to live a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him. See, he wants us to come to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. So he's given us all that we need and then we come to know him, verse four, and because of his glory and his excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. God has given us these promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. God has given us promises. Do we know what the promises are? Are we claiming the promises in our life? For example, one of the promises that God gives us, we talked about this last week, is that God is with you wherever you go. God is always with you. He'll never leave you, never forsake you. He's an ever-present help in time of trouble. We also know another promise about God, that when we are tempted, he won't allow us to be tempted more than we can bear, and that he'll always provide a way of escape. This is a promise from God. There's another promise is that if we are weary and if we carry heavy burdens, we can come to God and he says that he will give us rest. There's another promise that says, says that if we confess our sins to him, that he is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our unrighteousness, that God will forgive us. These are promises. These are not mysteries. We know these things to be true. These are promises for you and for me. In scripture, there's nearly 7,500 promises. Are you facing anxiety in your life? There's promises that are regarding that. Are you worrying about things? There's promises about worry. Are you fearful about things or fearful about situations? There's promises about that. Are you concerned for the future? There's promises. There are promises for you when you get into God's word. See, God's promises are not a mystery, but we have to uncover them by being in scripture. This is why it's so important for us to make a daily habit of being in scripture and learning about God, learning the promises that he has for us in there. Another thing that we know about how God works in your notes is that God works through people like you. Like look around for just a minute. Like, see these people in here? God works through people like them. And God works through you too. God works through people like you. It says in John chapter 14, verse 12, Jesus is speaking here. He says, I tell you the truth. 
I mean, Jesus doesn't lie, but he's reemphasizing the fact that what he's saying is true. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works that I've done and even greater works because I'm going to be with the Father. He's saying that you can do great things in his name, that God will work through you in the lives of others. God can work through you, he can work in you, he can work through your actions, he can work through your words, and he can work through your prayers. This is why we encourage each other to to pray for each other, to pray. If somebody comes and says, hey, I'm going through a difficult time, to say, hey, can I pray for you right now? Every week we're hearing about prayers that are being answered because God is working through normal people like you and me. And you never know how God will use you to impact someone else's life by just simply maybe a kind word or a, helping someone out in time of need, being a, a shoulder to lean on, being, being someone that can, can help, someone to talk through things. God wants to use you to work in the lives of other people. It's kind of crazy to think that God can use you and God can use me to carry out his mission here on this earth. See, God's plan is to use us to do his work And I can't help but thinking, that doesn't sound like a very good plan, God. Like, I know who I am, and I know who a lot of these people are. Like, God, it doesn't seem like that great of a plan to depend on us. And yet he says that he wants to work through us. He wants to work through us even when we are weak, because that's when his strength is made perfect. Another thing that we know about God and how he works in your notes is that everything God does is good. Everything he does is good. It says in Psalm Chapter 107, verse one. It says, give thanks to the Lord for he is what? He is good. He is good. Underline that in your notes. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. You know, God is good. He is always good. You may be thinking, yeah, but sometimes bad things happen. Yeah, I know. I know sometimes bad things do, uh, do happen, but one thing I do know is that God promises, another promise is that he will work that together for good for those who love him and are called to his purpose. See, everything that God does is good. Everything that God does. See, the, if you look at a diamond, okay, the, the grinding process for a diamond, it doesn't feel very good for the diamond. It seems painful. You're just chipping away. You're just grinding away at me. But what is the purpose of of chipping away or grinding away at a diamond? It's to make it more valuable. And God may be working on you in much the same way through some difficulties, through some, some hard situations, but he's using that to polish us, to shape us, to refine us so that we can be valuable for the kingdom of God. So God is good all the time, not just sometimes because he is good. He is a good God. He is a faithful God. He is a just God. He is a true God. And in your notes, God wants to reveal himself to you. God wants you to know him better. And he gives us these promises. He wants us in his family He promises that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. God works in some mysterious ways, but he also works in ways that he's promised. Back to the man, William Cowper, the guy who wrote this hymn that coined the phrase, God moves in mysterious ways. After he wrote this hymn, he went through some difficulties in life and then he started getting this idea in his head that he was damned for an eternity separated from God. He, he, he had this idea that God didn't love him anymore. He had this idea that, that God didn't want him in his family, that God couldn't save him. And he had this idea, as far as we know, until the day that he died. See, and this is the flaw with thinking that only God works in, God only works in mysterious ways. Because see, if William Cowper knew the truth that God also works by his promises, he could have known beyond the shadow of a doubt that if he confessed his sin, God would forgive him. That if he called on the name of the Lord, that he would be part of God's family and that he would not have to doubt whether or not he was made right with God. But yet, His idea was that God works only in mysterious ways. See, God wants us to know him. See, he wants us to know that he's promised us things and that he is good. See, we need to make it a priority in our lives to know him 
better. We'll close to this verse in Philippians chapter three, verse eight. It says, yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. And everything in my life is worthless when I compare it to knowing God. See, we can know God. We can know his attributes, his character. Hey, we, can, we can understand the way he moves and works. Yes, everything is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I've discarded everything else. I've counted it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through my faith in Christ. See, this is how we're made right with God because of our faith in Jesus Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. So verse 10, I want to know Christ and I wanna experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I wanna suffer with him, sharing in his death so that one way or the other, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. He says, I want to know God more. I want to know him. Yes, at times God works in mysterious ways, but God also works in ways that are true to his character, that are true to what scripture tells us. God wants you to know him. Sometimes it feels like it's a mystery. It's a mystery how to get to know God. Sometimes it feels like God is far off. And sometimes it feels like you don't understand God's ways and why he's doing certain things in your life. That's okay, because what he's doing is for the good. And although there are things that are a mystery, he wants you to know him more. He wants to reveal himself to you that he is a good God, that he is a loving God, that he is true to his promises and that ultimately he wants to work through you and the lives of others to expand his kingdom here on this earth. So yes, God does work in ways that seem confusing at times, but he also works in ways that he has promised to over and over again. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. And we thank you that you are a good God, that you work in mysterious ways, but you work in ways that you've, you've explained to us too, that you are faithful, that you are true, that you are loving, you are kind. And we put our trust and our hope and our faith in you. If you're here and you don't know Jesus is your Lord, there is a promise here for you that anyone who calls on his name will be saved. There's a promise that if you confess that God raised Jesus from the dead, you confess that he is your Lord, you'll be saved. That if you confess your sins, that he's faithful and just to forgive you, that he'll replace your heart of stone with a heart of flesh, that he'll give you a, a second chance at life when you call in his name. Won't you take advantage of that promise to you now and call on his name? Speak the words, Jesus, you are my Lord and I put my trust in you and in you alone. God, we thank you that you are faithful and that you are true, that you've promised us so many things, that you've promised us peace, that you've promised us power, that you've promised us love and a sound mind. We know that you've promised that you'll work even the, the harshest situations together for good. We thank you that you've promised that you'll never leave us or forsake us, that you are here with us even now, that you're guiding us, that you're directing us, that you're using us to advance your kingdom. So we put our trust in you and we thank you that you are a good God and we fully put our hope in Jesus Christ our Lord. And it's in his name that we pray. Let's stand together and sing.